In the early 9th century, Norsemen from Western Norway sailed across the North Atlantic Ocean to Shetland and onto Orkney, known collectively as the Northern Isles, the islands to the north of Scotland. They probably came in considerable numbers, and they definitely left their mark on these islands, although it's not thought that they wiped out completely the native Pictish inhabitants of the isles, uh, because we find things like combs as well on Shetland, there's the continuation of Christian stone sculpture, and some of the place names also denote there was a Pictish Celtic presence there, although Although the Scandinavian incomers were going to be a very important demographic there. Now today 30% of the DNA on Orkney is Scandinavian, although quite a lot of the non-Scandinavian DNA was Scots DNA that came in afterwards. So it's thought that during the Viking Age there was probably a majority Scandinavian and Norse culture on both Shetland and Orkney at the time. Now of course throughout the British Isles there were many areas that were settled by both the various populations of Norsemen from today Denmark and Norway in these areas um, and they definitely left their implant on the modern languages that we speak in the British Isles. So for example in English words like muck, husband and reindeer all come from Old Norse whereas in Irish you have words like brog for shoe, the Irish word for anchor as well and also bard which means uh, a boat in Irish um, as well as various words that only exist in certain dialects or that went out of fashion. Now it's interesting that in all of these places Old Norse was fairly quickly subsumed by the languages around it. That is, apart from on Orkney and Shetland, the two islands to the north of Scotland, as well as on the Caithness Peninsula, in the very north of the mainland. And it's this language that developed from the Old Norse language and became a separate language which today we know as Norn. Now it was indeed part of the Old West Norse language brought by people from Western Norway, as it was to various places in the North Atlantic Ocean, like the Faroe Islands, Iceland, Greenland, and also for some time the very north of the mainland of North America. Now these areas all developed into their own languages eventually, with Norwegian developing into its own language as well as Faroese and Icelandic and for a short time Greenlandic Norse, whereas in the Scottish areas where Old Norse was spoken and continued to be spoken it became known as Norn. Now if we look at the language family tree here, developed from Old West Norse, we have obviously Norwegian, Icelandic, Faroese, Greenlandic Norse and Norn, whereas the other branch is the Old East Norse tree where the main surviving variants of that became Danish, Swedish and Elfdalian. So that's Norn's place in the bigger language family group. Now I'd like to quickly pause the video here and to give a quick shout out and say that I am indeed launching some of my own merchandise for after the Christmas period for the new year period. So if you'd like to have a go at making any designs for sort of t-shirts, posters, mugs, anything like that, make some channel art and send it to my email at historywithhilbert at gmail.com. It's always in the bottom of the description or any of my other social media. So feel free to get involved if you want to make some merch. So Norn survived afterwards in sort of the corpus of Old Norse literature. And and while we don't get any manuscripts being written on Shetland and Orkney at the time, we do get several runic inscriptions, which is how we sort of tracked uh, and knew that Old Norse was being spoken there and that it continued after the end of the Viking Age. Now, it remained part of Norway, actually, for quite a long time, under the control of the Earls of Orkney, whose banner is quite famous now and is actually that raven banner right there which is an interesting topic in itself because the raven is such a pagan symbol, yet this banner continued to be used by the ills of Orkney during this time. And they appear to have been quite powerful, having taken part in the Battle of Clontarf in 1014, and also having been very much involved with Norwegian politics at the time. The political situation in late 12th century Norway was very volatile, and in 1194 a rebellion broke out against the king called Sverir Sigurdarsson. And during this rebellion it was the ills of Orkney who spear headed the charge against him and was the main recruiting ground for Sigurd Magnusson and he employed the help of the Jarl or the Earl of Orkney and Shetland in the north of Caithness at the time, a guy called Harald Madolson uh, and from the name interesting enough Madod is probably from a Celtic origin whereas Harald obviously is a Norse name so he is of mixed Norse and Celtic heritage which really does describe the situation in uh, Orkney and Shetland at the time but anyhow they both banded together in a rebellion against Sverdir Sigurdarsson, the king of Norway at the time, and sailed for the coast of Norway with an army largely recruited from these northern isles. But on the 3rd of April in that year, the Birkebeiner party of King Sverdir fought against the pretenders and the army of Orkney, led by Sigurd Magnusson, and the royalist party was successful, 
and of course that meant that the Shetlanders and the men of Orkney, who together actually were known during this rebellion as the Oiskegs, which means the island beardies or the bearded men of the isles, were defeated and after this course of action Shetland was placed under direct Norwegian rule and the very long line of Norse earls that had been in place with Harald Maldolson and his forefathers going back with the Raven Banner was broken and after this time you got Scots earls, so men who were speaking Scots from that line that were promoted to be the earls of Orkney and Shetland um, rather than this long line of quite independent minded earls and this already was a transition in the history of Norn because now the people at the top of society were no longer really speaking the Norn language, there was more of a shift towards the Scots language which was becoming commonplace throughout the rest of mainland Scotland as well. After this calamitous period in Norwegian history, Norway and Denmark came together in the Kalmar Union. Now in Scotland, the Scottish government had some issues taxing Hebrides and the Isle of Man, which had both been Norse possessions. And because of this, they were actually in quite a lot of debt to the United Danish and Norwegian crowns. And as such, they struck a deal that they would marry their young Prince James III to Margaret of Norway. Um, and in exchange for this, actually, as a surety for the dowry price, they agreed upon Shetland and Orkney. But they never actually paid the dowry price, which meant that then Orkney and Shetland changed possessions from being Norwegian possessions and part of the Kalmar Union to then going over to being a Scottish possession, uniting the islands to the north with the rest of Scotland as they are today. Now this of course meant that there was now a new influence on the Norn language because now they were in a political union with a country that was rapidly becoming majority Scots speaking and so we see lots of Scots influence on the Norn language. Now this is actually a little tongue twister and a riddle in the Norn language and the answer actually if you didn't know was a cow but that's only if you can understand the Norn that's written here. The Norn which I've used here is by the way the Shetland version of Norn and we can compare a few different versions so here again I've got the Norn version of this this little riddle which we see across the um, various islands so we have it in Faroese and Icelandic as well as further down in later Scots and there is also an English version and a Norwegian version which makes it very easy to compare the various aspects of Norn with the other languages around it. So we can see that it's fairly similar to the Faroese language, which is also an insular Scandinavian language, which is spoken on the Faroe Islands, which are essentially in between Shetland and Iceland. Um, and here we also have in Orcadian Scots, which is the Scots dialect that developed on Orkney after the extinction of the Norn language, although it do did keep rather a lot of words from the Norn language and is one of the main ways that we can reconstruct Norn today. So you can see quite a few of the similarities between them there. Now it's again interesting because we see in a lot of the place names in Shetland and Orkney, so the people that really brought the language of Norn there in the first place in the middle of the 9th century, that most of these place names, the toponymy as it's called, is similar to that in Western Norway. However, most of the vocabulary that we have for Shetland and Orkney and the Norn language is actually from the south of Norway instead. So one theory that I quickly thought of and that can probably be discredited very quickly is that it's likely that the first people who settled there were from Western Norway, as we see this pattern with toponymy occurring in other places in Scotland, in the Hebrides, and also in the Faroes and Iceland, where certain regions of Norway, the place names there are replicated almost exactly in other places, in the places where these Norsemen colonised. But that perhaps their contact thereafter with the Norwegian government and uh, with fishing and trade was more with the south of Norway. So that had more of an influence on the core vocabulary, whereas the place names of the original settlers who settled there were from Western Norway. But that's just my theory there. And I thought that was an interesting thing to show. It's also interesting that for the longest time, Norn was spoken on Shetland rather than Orkney, again probably because it was further out, um, and the Shetland dialect of Norn had less of an influence and a later influence of Scots than the Orcadian dialect of Norn. So if we want to compare the two between Orcadian, this is the Orcadian dialect of Norn, um, and this is actually the Lord's Prayer in Norn, which was one of the 
um, source materials that we have in Norn for uh, reconstructing it and looking at it. Whereas this is the same, but then in Shetlandic Norn. As you can see, the uh, first one is a bit more like Scots. Uh, you can see some words through it that have quite obviously got a Scots influence on there. Whereas the Shetlandic version is a bit more like Faroese. It's been a bit less touched um, by the Scots language there. Um, and unfortunately, Norn stopped being spoken in somewhere in the 19th century, we're fairly sure. So usually the last person that's associated with speaking Norn is Walter Sutherland, who died in 1850, although it was recorded by linguists who, who came there to the islands of Orkney and Shetland that in some of the more isolated areas of Shetland, in the north especially, there were still people in the 1890s who could recite sentences, phrases, riddles, poems, and etc., in Norn, and there obviously are many words that are still around in the various dialects that are being spoken there. Um, so one of these features that you have in the dialects is that the TH of English goes to a D in this. So if you say this and that in uh, Shetlandic, that will be dat and dis, that kind of thing. Uh, and it's interesting because actually in Norwegian or uh, other languages as well, where you had once the thorn sound, the TH, that's also dropped to a D. So I believe in Norwegian, the TH or the thorn sound goes to a T. So what was once Thor in Old Norse goes to Tor in um, Norwegian today. But it's an interesting feature that as well, you have many words, so words like uh, nost, uh, voar, uh, and drazi. This drazi actually means otter. Uh, I'm pretty sure a voar is a sheltered inlet, and other words like this all come from the Norn language and are still used by people today on Shetland and Orkney. Um, and also cabby labby, although, hold on a minute, isn't that from the Dutch word gibbelen? I think it is. <laughs> Alright everyone, so this has been my video on the Norn language, this Old Norse derived language that continued to be spoken into the 19th century on Orkney and Shetland. So I hope you've really enjoyed this one, I thought it was incredibly interesting, a lot of people wanted to hear more about it when I made my previous video on languages in Scotland with Robert the Bruce and things like that. So if you did find this one interesting, please do give me a thumbs up and start any discussions you want in the comments below, there'll be people out there who know a lot more about this, possibly some people even who've looked into the reconstruction of the language known as Ninorn, which I, uh, I know that sounds a lot like a fire engine, um, but it's actually an attempt to reconstruct the language, and I've actually got a video on the way about this if you're interested with some more tidbits about the Norn language. So if you did enjoy this one, please do give me a thumbs up, share it with anyone who found it interesting. Um, also, do get stuck in with the competition to make some channel art for some various merchandise, uh, and feel free to send that in, etc. So thanks very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. I'm History with Hill, but if you haven't seen my other stuff and you thought this one was interesting, then look in the comments below. Not the comments, the description. I'll leave some extra sources and other things for you to get stuck into if you are into this kind of thing. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon.